Welcome to episode 66 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is the curious case against the LNC secretary, where I'll discuss the current and second effort to bring punitive measures against Karen Ann Harlos, the secretary of the Libertarian Party. This episode will discuss uh, current issues regarding some LNC drama, but it's not really a topic I prefer to give attention to. However, part of being a party member does mean keeping up with the happenings. Several months ago, there was an issue related to the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire affiliate and the LNC, the Libertarian National Committee. Things escalated rather quickly, and two individuals from the LNC became the center of an internal squall. One was Joshua Smith, an LNC member and the host of Break the Cycle. The second and notable figure in this particular matter was our LNC secretary, Karen Ann Harlos who also has a podcast, Pink Flame of Liberty. There appears another motion to suspend Ms. Harlos from the LNC. In this episode, we'll take a look at the claim, the evidence, and then see what we find. With that, let's dive right in. All right, let's start with this. I'm a simple guy. There's quite a bit of presented evidence. Rather than boringly walk through each item, I'm going to make this as simple as possible and in about maybe 25 minutes, make my case that LNC members should vote no on this matter. First, three disclaimers. Number one, as far as I know, everything that I mention here is already public. I believe it's poor form in most cases to put out private information. Number two, I hate the idea of using names on this podcast. It really feels to me like putting people on blast, and I also consider that to be poor form. Plus, I think it distracts from the truth. Now, while I will provide some images in this podcast, I'm not going to provide any links to any documents. Those links are out there. You can find them if you want them. And number three, at no point have I ever been a financial supporter of Ms. Harlow's. I like to joke, you're more likely to get the rifle from Charlton Heston's cold dead hand than money from my warm live one. Let's get into it now. On August 27th, an email was submitted to the LNC introducing this matter. Here's what it says, reading directly from the email now. It is with a certain reluctance that I find myself requesting one hour of agenda time for our meeting next week. The purpose of the agenda item is to consider the following motion, to be perfected at the meeting, that Karen Ann Harlos is hereby suspended as the secretary of the Libertarian National Committee. A bill of particulars can be found here. Please note that within the document, there are links to four appendices files, A, B, B videos, and C, that provide documentation in support of the motion. I encourage LNC members and those who question this action to review the documentation carefully. The move to suspend a duly elected officer or board member should never be taken lightly. Great consideration has been given to the wisdom of this course of action, and it should not be considered precedential for future boards who may find themselves in simple disagreement with one another. The ability to talk through issues maturely is critical to effective functioning on boards. We believe, however, that heading into the 2022 election cycle and our convention, that it is critical that the LNC regain its ability to function effectively as an organization that can discuss and debate issues openly. It is possible for boards to effectively ignore a single non-officer member who becomes detrimental to the functioning of the board. It is far more difficult to ignore an officer of the board. Okay. So first thing right away, this part catches my attention where it says, quote, heading into the 2022 election cycle and our convention that it is critical that the LNC regain its ability to function effectively as an organization that can discuss and debate issues openly. If the LNC has lost the ability and it's due to an officer on the board, then I agree, some action needs to be taken. However, That means I will need to see evidence that the organization was functioning at a specific or certain level prior to Ms. Harlow's actions, and that since it has diminished. A list of particulars is referenced, providing more details. 
this document is five pages long. So it'd be a bloody boring read if I read it in its entirety. I will, however, do my best to maintain proper context when I read snippets from it. First page includes a fair summary of the alleged issues that support Ms. Harlow's suspension. Here's what it says. Quote, Ms. Harlow's has engaged in a long-term pattern of behavior, both in official communication and via her monetized social media and YouTube platforms, which is detrimental to the party and its operations and purposes. These actions by Ms. Harlow's have resulted in members of the LNC being unable to engage in respectful and professional public discussion before the body, making the committee dysfunctional for fear of bullying, harassment, and inaccurate characterizations to discredit and disrupt the committee's work. This pattern of behavior has been furthermore combined with the ethically objectionable. Ms. Harlos's practice of, as an officer of the party of attempting to monetize her position with frequent requests for contributions based on her status as an officer and in support of her attacks on the other members of the LNC are unethical. Okay, between the email and this portion, I've narrowed the accusations down to four major items. Again, each which is accompanied by evidence that her official communication and her monetized social media pres presence demonstrates. Number one, it's detrimental to the party, including its operations and purposes. Number two, LNC members are unable to engage in respectful and professional public discussion. Number three, there is a fear of bullying, harassment, and inaccurate characterizations that discredits and disrupts the committee's work. And number four, Ms. Harlos seeks money based on her status as an officer and in support of attacks on other LNC members. The first two aren't defined clearly, but in the summary on page five, it is claimed that her actions have resulted in the loss of established LP members, LNC officers, LP employees, and longtime donors. It is also claimed that she has, quote, harmed the perception of the party and has become a liability to the party's public image. We need to stop right here. If true, this represents a serious problem, and the LNC is not only right to respond, but they must. The question is whether the evidence presented supports what is being charged. The Bill of Particulars identifies what we should find in each appendix under the section in bold. Here's what it says. Ms. Harlos's unfitness for office is exemplified by the following. Let's start with Appendix A. Appendix A says, Ms. Harlos generates conflict on the LNC and with state parties to be used as a basis for her monetized online presence and request for contributions. Appendix A has 39 screenshots. I'm not walking through all of them. The criteria is very simple here. She generates conflict with LNC members and with state parties and then does so for the purpose of seeking money. The strongest piece of evidence here is the screenshot fb to youtube3.jpg. Here's what it says. You can help me to continue to drive them batshit crazy. Imagine if I rode their asses full time. Okay, let's start, let's start with this. Them and their are unclear pronouns, but I think it's fair and reasonable to assume that she specifically means at least the members of the LNC, if not others. However, in that very same screenshot, someone else inquires about whether or not she wants to build her brand in that manner. Ms. Harlos responds by identifying a nondescript group of people who she claims mischaracterizes whole groups of people. The problem with this evidence is in Ms. Harlos's own words, they, she clearly indicates her efforts to challenge alleged bad actors who are speaking ill of other people. This isn't generating conflict, but it's responding to existing conflict. Big difference. The next image that I'd like to look at is FB to YouTube5.jpg. Now, at first, this one appears even worse. She's losing a Patreon over a vote. Any member exchanging votes for money should be immediately removed, period. But again, in Ms. Harlos's very own words, in the same image, she indicates that this person stopped being a Patreon over what she believed to be a misunderstanding of her vote. This isn't seeking support on the basis of her vote, but seeking to clarify to a former supporter that there was a misunderstanding and that they had no reason to be upset. 
Ms. Harlos then unambiguously states that people can support her for any reason they want, and that no supporter should expect to agree with her all the time. Most importantly, though, she asked for financial support explicitly on the basis of her ethical principle, her words in this same piece of evidence. Now, one last item from Appendix A, YouTube about.png. This is a screenshot of her about page on her YouTube channel. What you'll notice, and other screenshots from different social media accounts also show, is that she delineates everything she says as her opinion and not that of the LNC unless specifically stated otherwise. I did not see any evidence that uh, was without this sort of disclaimer in some way. I also did not see any evidence where she sought monetary compensation in exchange for generating controversy that did not already exist. Now let's move along to Appendix B. The Bill of Particulars continues saying this. Ms. Harlos has publicly alleged that members of the LNC were attempting to compel her to commit suicide. This accusation was wholly without factual basis and caused a great deal of concern among both LNC members and party members. See Appendix B, Appendix B videos. I want to be honest with you. Both of those videos are over an hour in length, and I did not watch, nor have I ever seen either one of them. If it were important enough, those specific, uh, then specific clips should have been provided or maybe timestamps, and then from there, I could judge whatever context that I needed to watch. Appendix B does have nine images. Two of them are emails, and the others are additional social media screenshots. In one email, Ms. Harlos appears to be following up about an alleged harassment incident. In the other one, it was a bit harder for me to decipher, but it does indicate that at least two LNC members expressed concern for suicidal ideation and Ms. Harlos's mental health, along with her responses for people to mind their own business. What I didn't see was Ms. Harlos definitively stating that any particular LNC members were attempting to compel her towards suicide. Ms. Harlos does indeed express issues with anxiety and other mental health issues in some of her posts. Now, I'd like to stop here, and I want to remind listeners and watchers, you know, anybody that's, that's checking this out, that I'm expecting evidence of lost members, officers, employees, and donors, along with evidence that she's seeking money to engage or start conflict, and evidence that the party has suffered damage to its image publicly and internally over Ms. Harlow's actions. But in the first 46 images and two emails, I find little substance to support any of this. No screenshots of donors saying that they're holding financial support over Ms. Harlow's, no members resigning from the LNC or leaving the party and explicitly referencing Ms. Harlow's actions. There is evidence that Ms. Harlow's is asking for financial support and for people to increase her social media metrics. And in return, she offers to remain principled and to give hell to those alleged to be bad actors. Ms. Harlow's does post about her feelings about various situations and certain people, even by name. And it appears that suicide entered into the conversation at some point, but it's unclear exactly how or by whom. So let's move on to the final appendix, C. In the Bill of Particulars, it's a bit lengthy, so I'm just going to summarize. Evidence here is expected to show that Ms. Harlow's has slandered multiple people that were recommended for committee she slandered LNC members, the LNC as a body, other party members, and claimed abuse from another LNC member, and at times done so quite profanely and in a sexually explicit manner. Appendix C has 10 full videos. Again, I did not watch any of them, which I will address this in a moment. I did review the numerous images and PDFs, but again, I'm only going to highlight just a few. The presented emails show LNC members responding and even asking further questions of Ms. Harlos. It's difficult to reconcile this as evidence the LNC is unable to function properly when it appears they are doing just that. Now, there are some sharp responses and even calls for the chair to intervene, and that's understandable. But the question, again, is a matter of what are we comparing it against? What isn't presented is any evidence that this is out of the ordinary or that it's a far leap from what is ordinary. 
I can read those emails and say things should be better, but that isn't an objective measure to compare against because there's no baseline presented. My experience so far with the libertarian community is that it's full of difficult and cantankerous people from the local level to the state and all the way up to the national. Now, how about we review a couple pieces of that evidence? BillyUContact.pdf is an email chain where someone emails in a complaint and Ms. Harlos appears to defend it while simultaneously rebuking another LNC member. Again, despite a sharp response, it appears that others are participating. This next one is very interesting. LNC37.jpg. This is a screenshot that includes me. I'd like to say this. No one reached out letting me know that my comment would be included in a screenshot as, a, as part of a case against Ms. Harlos. I have long criticized the use of screenshots within the libertarian community against each other. In fact, let me regale you with a short and very true story. A couple of years ago, I was meeting with some of my web developer friends and a gentleman showed up who recognized me from the libertarian community. Whatever controversy at the time was brewing was brought up. And I just so happened to mention a particular frustration in seeing the willingness that people had to screenshot and post them all over the place. He mentioned that he had many such screenshots and was just waiting for the right moment to use them. A friend of mine who is not part of the libertarian community, but he is part of the web development community, happened to be present as well. You could not miss his face recoil in horror when he heard that. You want to talk about perception? Maybe we should talk about that. Other time, maybe. Anyway, my comment here is public, and it was not used uh, itself as evidence. That's fine. Still, I oppose any use of my name or comments in any punitive action against another member. Redacting my image and my name would have been easy enough. And, to be honest with you, Ms. Harlos's uh, initial claim here apparently turned out to be true. Let's move on to the next one. COVID.PDF. Well, this is an email that was sent to the LNC regarding its silence on the issue of mandates and so forth. Ms. Harlos appears to agree that the silence is inexcusable. I I'm not really sure how this supports anything negative. Is she not supposed to have an opinion on what people email in? Moving along, intconcern.pdf. This one details a conversation that again occurs between LNC members who are very willing to express their thoughts on the matter. You see a number of them chiming in. But beyond that, most of the images in this particular folder, in this appendix, Appendix C, are images um, or screenshots of initiated comments from Ms. Harlos's social media accounts, or they're part of conversations where she's engaging with others who have initiated a conversation, but they're mostly the former. Some of the evidence in Appendix C does show that Ms. Harlos is speaking negatively of other LNC members, members that were up for a committee, um, of committee consideration, other party members, and at times, very indecorously. What I don't find, though, is evidence that the party's image was harmed, internally or externally. In many of the conversations I've personally observed, I see that Ms. Harlow's will echo the existing sentiments of members, which I suspect played a role in why she was voted to her position in the first place. But still, I don't see any evidence that her actions have resulted in the loss of officers, employees, donors, and members, or that her actions are the cause of this fear of bullying, harassment, um, or the in inability for the LNC to engage in respectful or professional public discussion, or that Ms. Harlos uses her status as an officer and her willingness to uh, attack officers in order to acquire money. I have personally observed Ms. Harlos send out calls to email the LNC, but also request that people do so respectfully. And you know what? Let's be honest. Members of the party would be just as cantankerous with or without her. Instead, what I'm presented with is Ms. Harlos' own words and then left to assume that the result of all, things hap all these things happened. And that's a challenge because I'm not getting what I'm saying here is there isn't any evidence to say that connects this negative language to a particular result. It's just assumed that it's happened. That's not, that's not acceptable. 
making it even more difficult is that over the last several months, a number of members have left or withdrawn some level of involvement or monetary support. But they did so over the perceived direction of the party after the Mises Caucus's many state election successes. In addition to providing evidence that she is the cause, we need to clearly separate who left because of her and who might have left for other reasons. After spending several hours of my own personal time, I see no justification for suspension of Ms. Harlos. That is only to say the claims about the results of her actions have not met, have not been met, and the body of evidence is quantity, not quality. If the quantity came with quality, then picking a few of the worst examples would be sufficient. And I don't find evidence that Ms. Harlos is using anything more than her already built reputation to monetize her social media work. You know, I've often said that too many libertarians bring charges against other libertarians on a quality of evidence they would not themselves want to be judged by. Having reviewed much of the evidence, and having compared it to the stated claims about loss of participation, money, and destruction of our image, or the party's image, I have to oppose any vote to suspend Ms. Harlow's. It isn't to say that I believe that Ms. Harlow's is entirely innocent. I have strong opinions about publicly rebuking someone. It's a practice that I think is rife on all sides with this, within this community. So I won't be going into any issues that I might have with Ms. Harlow's here. But remember, the original email to the LNC said this, the move to suspend a duly elected officer or board member should never be taken lightly. Great consideration has been given to the wisdom of this course of action, and it should not be considered precedential for future boards who may find themselves in simple disagreement with one another. Okay, first of all, you don't really, just by saying it shouldn't be considered precedential, will not make it so. And in fact, I would argue that suspension of Ms. Harlow's would indeed set a precedent that simply flooding the LNC with the deluge of impolite, indecorous, and frequently crass and foul social media postings are grounds for consideration to suspend rather than insisting on fewer evidence of much higher quality. Anyone who believes that Ms. Harlos is not fit for the LNC secretary position should present a better option in Reno. If your alternative is a subjective, this person doesn't have her brash temperament, then I will not find that convincing. I vote for people, not against. Now, I want to shift and answer a few questions that I thought might come up as people watch this video and maybe criticize me. The first one is that, um, that I didn't watch any of the videos and I only reviewed a few of the screenshots. There are 12 videos totaling almost 16 hours and there's 146 PDFs and screenshotted images. If I averaged one minute to read and review each PDF or image, it would take me a combined total of 18 and a half hours to review the body of evidence. I want you to consider that reviewing all of that would require over 425 hours of the LNC's time if they were to review it fairly before voting yes. And if delegates who have a vested interest in how the LNC votes, particularly in regards to the secretary that they voted in, if the roughly 1,000 delegates reviewed it as well, that's an additional 18,500 hours. <laughs> Do we as a party have that kind of time? I went through the effort to make this podcast episode a bit shorter because I felt it was important enough to point out the problems with the body of evidence. But again, I wanted to make sure that I was respectful of others' time the same as I want my time respected. And so I made it shorter on purpose. The authors should have had more respect for the members of this party, the LNC, and the delegates by narrowing the body of evidence down to a handful of the most damning evidence, and then either provided snippets of video or timestamps. Just reviewing what I did and making this podcast response has come at the expense of several hours that were taken from other more productive pursuits.
Okay, well, what about evidence that maybe I didn't mention? Maybe I should have picked other items. Well, here's the deal. I picked what evidence I thought was the strongest when I'm presented with such a large body of evidence and I'm asked to make heads or tails of it. And in this particular case, I'm, because there was no evidence presented that was connecting her actions to the results of her actions, that is, there were no emails, there were no screenshots of members saying, I'm leaving the party over this particular person, I'm left to make heads or tails that this, inf that this uh, body of evidence is uh, the cause of this particular result. So when that happens, you get what I find. And I reiterate, the authors should have narrowed it down to the very worst for myself and anyone else that needed to look into this to focus on. Evidence now does show that Ms. Harlos uses inappropriate language, sometimes is rude to others. I don't disagree. Others wouldn't disagree. I don't think Ms. Harlos would either. Her temperament is well known. But remember, the authors aren't asking to suspend her for indecorous language. And the body voted her, voted her in as secretary knowing that. The authors are asking to suspend her for the result of that indecorous language. Let me repeat from the original email. Quote, We believe, however, that heading into the 2022 election cycle and our convention, that it is critical that the LNC regain its ability to function effectively as an organization that can discuss and debate issues openly. And then, in the Bill of Particulars, it continues on saying this, these actions by Ms. Harlos have resulted in members of the LNC being unable to engage in respectful and professional public discussion before the body, making the committee dysfunctional for fear of bullying, harassment, and inaccurate characterizations to discredit and disrupt the committee's work. Now, let's point out something very quickly here. A moment ago, I mentioned that whether Ms. Harlos was here or not, that we would be just as a cantankerous body as we always are? Does anybody believe that none of that would be happening even if she wasn't the secretary? The evidence provided shows the nature of her discourse, but not the result. Members are asked to hold her accountable for both. Okay, how about this one? Maybe I'm just aligned with her and I'm providing cover. We in the libertarian community love saying that somebody is providing cover. You know what? One can certainly see it that way. I get it. But I think an honest evaluation of the evidence will show that it's quantity over quality. Besides, I have expressed my dissatisfaction with Ms. Harlos's delivery in the past. I've done so online and I've done it in person. I also consider people's actions based on context. And I've equally held this position towards several notable figures in the Libertarian Party, friend or foe. I'll go as far as saying there isn't a single person that I have defended that I have not also criticized. I hope you found that I hope you found this podcast and all this review of the information useful. If not, go ahead, let me know. But for now, that's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I want you to connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, all one word, or Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email hate mail maybe, to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head on over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media network. And remember, if you are a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out. <laughs>